Hi, I am Kakarla Krishna Kishore, Professor in Mechanical Engineering. Today, in this session, we are going to discuss ductile fracture, which comes in failure mechanisms in material technology. Now, let me discuss the ductile fracture and the importance of ductile fracture and how we are going to identify ductile fracture. Let me discuss the various features of ductile fracture. Now, first the definition says the ductile fracture is the most common room temperature mechanism of failure in metals. You can observe the material here. This is the ductile fracture. Here, most of the ductile fractures observed at room temperature. So that means that's why this mechanism is represented as most common room temperature mechanism of failure. So this is nothing but failure for ductile materials. How this has happened and what are the various important features of ductile fracture we will discuss in the coming slides. Now, how we are going to identify in engineering. So that means ductile fracture identifies in engineering. Let me discuss like this. The first point is ductile fracture is a type of fracture characterized by extensive deformation of plastic or necking. Here, the important point is necking only. So that means before fracture observed, the first point is necking will be happened in the material ductile that's why this is ductile fracture is a type of fracture we cannot say that completely it is a fracture initially necking will be observed after that fracture you can observe in any material so that is especially steel type of material or especially ductile so that after ductile fracture is identified in material we can say that the property of the material is like this here this usually, this ductile fracture usually occurs prior to the actual fracture. So that means uh, with, before going to observe the actual fracture, this fracture or the necking is observed. And the term, most of the time we are utilizing the ductile rupture. What do you mean by ductile rupture? It refers to the failure of highly ductile materials. If you take any ductile materials, then we can say that it is undergone ductile rupture and in such cases materials pull apart instead of cracking so that means instead of cracking that means in ductile materials most of the observations are necking only so that means materials pull apart instead of cracking we will see with the help of some uh, images here you can see the image and before going to this image how this ductile fracture occurs why this ductile fracture occurs this ductile rupture involves high degree of plastic deformation so we can uh, see this word here high degree of plastic deformation so that means the maximum deformation will be observed due to the ductile rupture involvement some of the energy whatever the energy generated during necking or during cracking so that from stress concentrations at the crack tips so what wherever the crack are observed so at that crack tips the stress is concentrated and it is dissipated by the plastic deformation ahead of the crack as it propagates so that means when the crack propagates automatically the energy is also dissipated by plastic deformation we can observe this total ductile rupture or the ductile fracture with the help of some image see the various stages of ductile rupture or ductile fracture here this is the specimen undergone tensile force the first stage is necking this is called as necking this is called as necking here the reduction in area at the center after necking is completed, a small particles, that means a small dislocations are generated, which is represented as a nucleation, void nucleation. Space has created at the center and slowly in the next stage, that means when the stress increases, slowly 
the voids increases like this the number of voids may increase when the stress increases in the next stage all these voids whatever the voids generated at the center all these voids combined together that means coalescence is happened to form a crack like this in the previous stage all these are generated individually but still if you still increase the stresses then automatically all these voids coalescence that means joined to form a crack finally it leads to fracture like this so initially it is represented as a crack so this is the ductile fracture you can observe this fracture like this that is a ductile rupture or ductile fracture now we will explain in another image this is another image which represents the same ductile nature how the ductile fracture is observed in the material so when the ductile fracture is observed what is the relation between stress and strain so this is the graph between stress and strain you can observe a straight line up to some extension so up to this junction that is represented as a y y means yielding point up to this junction stress is directly proportional to strain but after that the plastic deformation is observed this is happened for ductile material this may not happen for brittle material but for ductile material if you want to identify whether it is a ductile material or brittle material this is the this portion of the graph is very very important so that means it leads to this particular area gives that whether it is a ductile or brittle material you can observe the sentence here when a ductile material has a gradually increasing tensile stress when the tensile stress increases it behaves elastically so like that up to this it behaves like a elastic nature up to a limiting stress and then plastic deformation occurs then how to identify this fracture here please observe by taking two characteristics we can identify the ductile fracture the first one is there is a considerable gross permanent or plastic deformation in the region of ductile fracture so this is the first identification the second identification is the surface of the ductile fracture is not necessarily related to the direction here it is very very important the ductile fracture is not related to the direction so that means that direction is not important as we are seeing in brittle fracture in brittle fracture we are seeing in another manner we will see the differences also the direction of the principal tensile stress as it is in brittle fracture then what is the main difference between ductile and brittle fracture let us discuss the differences between the brittle fracture and ductile fracture the first important point which deviates from the ductile fracture is this brittle fracture involves this fracture without any appreciable plastic deformation so that means it will not give any plastic deformation without that immediate fracture may be happened when the load applies that means a complete absorption of energy here the energy absorption has been taken place so that's why this fracture that type of fracture is represented as a brittle fracture now you already know the ductile fracture this ductile fracture means the converse or involves a large plastic deformation that we have seen up, up to now that is in the previous images before separation before separation it undergone the plastic deformation now let us have some more differences between brittle and ductile fracture these are the various differences if you observe the first one the strain energy strain energy is required for ductile fracture is more that is higher and the front that is for brittle fracture is very very low stresses during cracking so stresses during cracking in ductile material continuously increases and it is constant in brittle fracture the crack propagation in ductile is very slow the crack will not propagate immediately it is a very slow process in ductile material but it is very fast process in 
brittle material warming sign so that means the in ductile nature or the ductile materials the plastic deformation that means before going to undergone the plastic deformation in brittle material there is no signal but in ductile material plastic deformation will be observed and the deformation is extensive that means very very extensive and elongate in ductile nature but it is very little in brittle materials necking is happened only in ductile materials it will not happen in brittle material and the fractured surface if you observe the fractured surface that is very very rough and dull in ductile materials but it is very smooth and bright in brittle materials the type of materials what are the type of materials which in which we can observe the ductile materials the most of the metals undergone ductile nature only that is ductile fracture only and most of the metal which is uh, ceramics glass ice all these are examples for brittle fractures so that means in ceramics or glass or in ice brittle fracture are observed you can observe another graph which clearly differentiates the brittle material and the ductile material nature how the fracture is happened here this is the graph between stress versus strain for brittle material this, this red line indicates the brittle material and this blue line indicates the ductile material so this area is whatever the area under this curve is the absorbed energy so this graph clearly shows that ductile material absorbs more energy or the maximum energy compared to ductile material so when an energy is absorbed automatically strength of the material is very very high compared to other materials so that means ductile material somewhat compared to brittle material it is having lot of advantages so this is the graph between stress and strain in brittle and ductile material let us have some more look this is another image which shows brittle and ductile fractures this is a specimen before fracture observed or the before load observed of the material after load applied on the material in initial stage or if the crack is observed like this this can be called as a brittle fracture if the if you observe this type of crack in any material then you can say that it is a ductile fracture this is a complete ductile fracture this is a partial ductile fracture both are ductile fractures only but if you observe this type of fracture in any material then we can say that that material is brittle material so that means depends on the crack we can say that whether it is a brittle or ductile material and why this uh, ductile fracture is uh, preferred in most applications is the first important point here the more of the plastic deformation ahead of the crack that means crack is unstable propagates rapidly without increase in applied stress so that's why we are concentrating on the ductile material and the second important point in ductile fracture or the ductile materials is more plastic deformation and energy absorption the plastic deformation is very very necessary to do the manufacturing process so to convert the material or to form the material into another shape the plastic deformation this property is necessary or the mandatory in any materials so that ductile materials having more plastic deformation compared to brittle materials so that's why the ductile fracture is preferred in most of the applications and before fracture energy absorption before fracture maximum energy will be absorbed by the ductile materials the maximum energy is absorbed by the ductile material automatically the toughness of the material increases so that's why we are concentrating and we are giving lot of importance to the ductile materials so this is all about uh, ductile fracture in failure mechanisms um kakarla krishna kishor i hope you understood all these things in next coming videos we will discuss some more points in material technology thank you thank you one and all kakarla krishna kishor signing off